wide range of thinkers have influenced the philosophy of the sect of the Horn God, from infamous occultists to renowned psychologists. But four individuals stand out as the most influential, and each of these individuals corresponds not only with the four major disciplines, the occult, mythology, psychology, and philosophy, but also with the levels of the human psyche, each going deeper. We begin with the ego is the center of the field of consciousness, the part of the psyche where our conscious awareness resides, our sense of identity and existence. LeVay believed in complete gratification of the ego. Satanism, in fact, is the only religion which advocates the intensification or encouragement of the ego. Only if a person's own ego is sufficiently fulfilled, LeVay said, can they afford to be kind and complimentary to others without robbing themselves of their self-respect. The mythological entity that is Satan bleeds down into our subconscious, thus overlaps with our next thinker. The personal unconscious is composed of elements drawn from one's own life experiences. Everything we know, but are not at this moment thinking about. Everything perceived by our senses, but not noted by our conscious mind. They all reside in the personal unconscious. According to Campbell, mythological symbols touch and exhilarate centers of life beyond the reach of the rational mind. They speak to the personal unconscious, aiding in the managing of its contents, endowing it with meaning. He believed the function of mythology was to reconcile waking consciousness to the transcendent mysteries, going deeply, eventually finding union with the archetypes of the collective unconscious, thus bringing us to... Carl Jung believed, unlike most of his contemporaries, that elements of an individual's nature are present from birth that we have a blueprint already in us that determines the course of our lives. This was highly controversial at the time, but is widely supported today. Evidence has been discovered that various species in the animal kingdom are born with behaviors uniquely adapted to their environment. It has been observed that these behaviors in animals are activated by environmental stimuli. In the same manner, Jung reasoned, human beings are brought to the fore. And like the unique behaviors of various species, Jung believed that we inherit what he called archetypes, universal thought patterns and images, much the same way all creatures inherit instinctive patterns of behavior. This brings us to the unique figure that is. Among the greatest thinkers of the 19th or any other century was Friedrich Nietzsche. He arguably stands as possessing the most profound insight of all time. Nietzsche was able to tap into something deep in the psyche, an undercurrent of the collective unconscious where he could not only perceive the pulse of humanity, but also patterns that open vistas stretching far into the future.
Where the collective unconscious is mostly static, the deep undercurrent flows, and Nietzsche was able to chart its flow with great accuracy. Before his death in 1900, Nietzsche went mad. Some say his mental breakdown was brought on by syphilis. Others think it was brain cancer. But some wonder if it had been more to do with his ability to chart with clarity the flow of the deep undercurrent and the horrors that lie therein.